Today I'm going to be playing with Astral Communion, so you don't have to, because holy crap is this deck awful. When Astral Communion was originally in Standard, it was actually one of my favorite cards, but since then it's just gotten so much worse. This is probably the Druid deck that lost the most, with the nerfs to Innervate and Wild Growth. Because with Innervate only giving one mana instead of two, that delays your Astral Communion by an entire turn. You can no longer turn two Wild Growth into turn three Astral Communion. And after playing the Astral Communion, you can no longer go Wild Growth and then draw into and play an eight drop. And on top of the nerfs, I feel like Hearthstone in 2019 is much more hostile towards janky strategies than the game used to be. So, a lot of things working against Astral Druid, but we're still going to give it a shot. So, obviously, I've got a lot of big, expensive cards in the deck. Deathwing is pretty much always the nuts the turn after you play Astral Communion. But Big Bad Archmage is good. Flood the board with Anixia. Use Geppetto to draw some relevant plays. Even Azalina Soul Thief is actually a pretty good addition to the deck, because you discard your whole hand and then get to refill it. But other than the big stuff, we do want some small stuff for the games where we don't have turn 4 Astral Communion. But we also want that small stuff to be relevant in the games where we do have the Communion. So we've got card draw stuff like Wrath and Novice Engineer. And I tried to limit the number of 9 and 10 cost minions to work with the Wrath and Novice. And then we've also got Worthy Expedition to maybe find like a Scenarius or Oasis Surger or Nourish or something. And I thought Crystal Song Portal would probably be pretty good. If you discard your whole hand, then it's not going to have any minions, so two mana draw three, and you could probably play a couple minions. Similar to those, we have Snip Snap. Play it on turn three, or play it for nine mana, make three Snip Snaps, pretty solid. And I've also got this Predatory Instincts Witchwood Grizzly package. So in the games where we don't draw Communion, Predatory Instincts is our best turn four play. And when we do Communion, we can go Predatory Instincts, which would Grizzly for 9 mana. So there actually is a lot to think about in terms of specific card choices when building the deck. But in-game, you basically hard bolt again for Astral Communion and hope it works out. Lunara versus Thrall. For Doomhammer. The forest fights back. Mulligan for the other Innervate, I guess. So, probably hoping to top deck Batterhead the turn after I play Communion. Well, I guess I don't necessarily need it that turn, but I'll need to draw it at some point. Let's see what nature has in store for me. Pretty good hand to discard as well. Wrath and Novice are filler cards. Curator isn't that good. I guess I take the biggest one. Try to clean his board up a bit. I don't think he would have played the Desert Hair there if he had Evolve in his hand, but prevents him from just like top decking Evolve and wrecking me. Of course, it's the right way. Is this a Deathwing turn? Deathwing is a 12-12. And it's like, if I try to hold it here for a better board, then whenever I play it, I'm discarding like a Siamat or an Alex Straza or something, so I'd rather just play it, I think. Oh, 
Oh, that one's playable. Show me Alex and Rag. Hmm, not the best. This 12 always goes face. So, I could just play both of these, run the rush guy into the 2 1, and then Ragnaros, if it hits face, that sets up for a lot of lethal opportunities. If it hits the 2 2, then Rag probably sticks around for a turn. And Rag is pretty terrible in this matchup in general. Like, this is the smallest board it's ever gonna see. So, whatever. That was the worst hit by a lot. But Deathwing and Geppetto are still threatening lethal. Okay, well, he high rolled a taunt, so that's fun. Set up for hero power to be lethal. Nice. How does it feel to get high rolled, Desert Hair Evolve Shaman? How does it feel? Take the one that's playable the soonest. This will be good. How much is this worth to you? Let's see what nature has in store for me. All right, top of my deck, don't let me down. Nine mana, three, eighteen taunt. Doesn't sound that good when I say it out loud. But surely this rogue deck doesn't play any removal. Hey, that's a good six. Probably top five six drops. Not the most exciting splinter graph, but whatever. Still an 8-8, eight, eight, right? What? Ooh, 2 mana 4-3, no downside? And he turned his test into garbage? Wait a second, it has a downside. Well shit. Hey, that one's good. Probably should have taken the 510 instead of the 8-8, but whatever. 
Nah, it hits good. Astral Communion. We've got ourselves a game. This will be good. Picked up a turn three at least. Probably should have roped it so he'd have time to get back. Alright, so he missed one damage. Not that big of a deal. Let's see what nature has in store for me. When I have a predatory instincts in my hand, I'm never sure if I should even play Astral Communion. Happy end. But it's not very exciting if I don't play the card. What you working with, boy? Amazing. His hand is pretty scary. What if... Well, I could use the cards out of Research Project and I can make him overdraw. So that's fun, I guess. My hand is too full. From what I can see, he doesn't have an answer to Thorison, right? But is Thorison better than just playing Anixia? Anixia does damage. What if... But then... He can just kind of play his own Thorison, but he's under quite a bit of pressure if he does that. Doomsayer is definitely scary if he picked up a Frost Nova or something. Or maybe even just with the Ray of Frost. I really wish he would overdraw, like, some Flame Wakers or something. My hand is too full. I guess this is a Thorison turn. Ooh, Coon. I'm only a Wrath and an Innervate away from the Zephyrus being active, so that's cool. Do you like to play with fire? Someday I'll be just like you. Well, I probably don't want to play Deathwing here, so let's do some other stuff. Can silence my guy and hit for 8. The problem is my rest of the turn with a 4 mana Keeper of the Grove is really terrible. I'm gonna hit him for 8, I guess.
He can flame strike me here, but I do still have the 7 7 to hang around, I guess. He has 8 mana. Okay, this could go really poorly for him. Well, he probably has a Ray of Frost to freeze whatever lives. No Ray of Frost. So if my Zephyrus was active, I would have lethal here. Well, I guess the play is 9 mana deal 1 damage. So what's the scariest thing he can do here? Like double flame waker sorcerer's apprentice? What to do? What to do? It's hard to see how that could really kill me, but maybe it could. I hope you like my invention. We have I guess I know that's an ice barrier, right? Ooh, that's an active Zephyrus. You shall pay for your you so Gorhowl is the easiest lethal here. <laughs> 